What up, players? It's Warboss Tape in Mud. Welcome to my tutorial on how to paint up some 6mm foot archers for the Heroics and ROS range. And let's just get into it. We got Mornfang Brown, Lead Belchers, Agrax Earthshade, Corn Red, these are in no particular order, Celestia Gray, Mephiston Red, Cadian Flesh Tone, Bugman's Glow, XV88, and that's that's all the colors that I use. So let's take a look at these and show you the effect that I was able to get with these. And um, I I love Ringo Simkin's video on how to paint six millimeter miniatures. It's so great, and one of the one of the things he, he finishes up with, I was watching that video, you know, once once or twice to, to prep for this, and uh, he said it's it's not the paint job on the individual miniature that counts, it's getting a cohesive, like a, a mass effect look of everybody all together lined up, ranked up. So uh, the, the main thing we want to do as painters is fool the viewer, the person looking at the miniatures, into thinking that they're all uniform and that we don't have any big mistakes. So I'm going to start with Bugman's Glow, and I'm only going to be really doing this back stand of, of figures. I realize that uh, nobody wants to see me paint every single stand of this. It would be quite tedious if it's just one step. So um, the great thing about these is it comes on a stand with five guys per little tab here. And so I'll show you that first I painted on the face and the front with the two arms. And uh, oh yeah, my my little popsicle stick keeps falling off. It's not used to being kept on the the cork like that. And when we flip the stand over to the back, we want to hit the right arm that's kind of bent back, like it's aiming the the arrow, or it's it, it just released. And so it's got like the forearm, and then the elbow, and then the upper arm, kind of at an at an L shape. So we want to get that in the back, and I. I think we're going to try and get for the left arm, it's the left forearm and the hand that's wrapped around the bow. So very simple, there's not really much technique that we're going with, we just don't want to put too much paint on the brush, we don't want to overload too much paint because the figures are so small as it is, 6mm figures are so small that we want to make sure that um, we only get the bare minimum of paint on that we need. XV88 is the color that we're going to use for the bows. I decided to go with XV88 as wood because it's kind of like a yellowish brown and it's very light so it will stick out nicely. If I went with a Steel Legion drab or a Mornfang brown it might have been too dark or too, in the case of Steel Legion, too drab and plain and this yellow, mustard yellow kind of brown is going to pop really nicely from across the table so you'll be able to really see what these guys are. So we're painting it from the front, and we just turn over the entire popsicle stick and paint it on the back. Now normally what you want to do is just assembly line, Henry Ford it all the way, finish one color all the way across. So do all the skin for all, you know, five bases, and then move on to the shield, uh, the, not the shield, the bow. And okay, here we are with the next one. I've already started painting on the other bases, but... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take Celestia Grey here and then we're going to paint the back of the tunics in this light grey white color. So I've done this with all of my other Byzantine guys on the rest of this lollipop stick, or popsicle stick rather, and now I'm showing you how to get to this one, adjusting the focus there and simple short brush strokes to get the color onto the figure. Just hitting the back of their, their skirts there. Very simple. Mornfang Brown, something that I realized when painting on the, the tunics is that they've got quivers on their backs, like right on their back hip, and I decided to go with Mornfang Brown for not only their quivers but also their boots. 
The reason for that is because they're so close to each other on the model, the boots are right below the quiver. Uh, your eye does not have a hard time. It, it doesn't uh, shock your eyes when you look at it to see just too much different colors. You don't want to hit too much different colors. If anything, you want a very simple color scheme that you can replicate because like I said, you know, uh, numbers matter. More is more is more. So you want a very simple color scheme. We're not going to be doing any crazy color combinations or mixtures or anything like that. It's just simple, straight out of the pot colors. And in this case, we've done the boots and the quivers. More in Fang Brown. Now we're going to take corn red and we're going to paint the shields. I decided to go with red. For all of them, I'm not sure if in the actual era that these guys were fighting if they had different colored shields to denote their separate houses or armies or forces. I've done some Google searches. I've, I've looked up a Byzantine army and I found some great artwork. Um, but most of them are not for archers but actually for like, um, they look like knights or foot soldiers and they've all got large tower shields with different colors and heraldry on it. Not really heraldry but just color designs. Uh, so I did nothing really for the arches though, so I just decided, you know what, red is a very powerful, strong color, especially when you are going off of the, the, the light brown and the whites of the back of the tunic. So not only did I decide to do the shield in red, but also the tops of the, the shafts of the arrows. And I think at this point I was dozing off, so <laughs> that's why I was like, just for some reason I decided this guy had to have red pajama pants so I turned off the camera got myself some coffee and fixed that right up okay Agrax Earthshade is the next color and I don't know if I filmed it already but I also hit all of the helmets and the front of their breastplates with lead belcher oh I hope the, the video didn't Oh, that clip isn't somewhere else. This looks like it's. It was one of the last things I did. Um, so, so metallic-wise, all I did was this silver lead belcher on the front breastplate and the helmet, and then painting. So you just paint it on the front, and then you turn the popsicle stick around, and then paint the back of the helmet. There's no silver bits on the back that I can remember. Yeah, because most of the back is obscured by this, the, the red shield. So the great thing about Agrax Earthshade is it ties all the colors together, it shades the colors really nicely, it's um, it's nice and dark, it, get, it creates really nice looking natural looking shadows, and very, uh, very simple to apply. Apologies for the camera being out of focus. Igor! Yes, master! You have to keep the focus on the camera, Igor. Oh, I'm sorry, Master. I just don't find it very at all interesting to paint these six millimeter historical figures. Oh, that's too bad, Igor. Anyways, you're not painting anything. You're just working the camera and eating cat tacos. I'm doing all the work. Oh, that reminds me. I think my cat taco is, is ready. I put it in the oven. So just the front and the backs. We're hitting the fronts with Agrax Earthshade. You want to make sure you take your your brush and you move that Agrax Earthshade around all the way around. Okay, yeah, I guess I get. I guess I didn't film myself doing the armor. Um, Mephiston Red though is how we're going to highlight. I've given. You want to take a little break, so maybe like five, 10, 15 minutes to let the shade dry. And then when you're painting on your Mephiston Red here. Uh, I like to paint the center nubbins of the shield and then just do a little bit of the rim on the outside. So you keep that corn red and you keep that Agrax earth shade, but uh, you do get a little bit pop of color. This is way above and beyond what you need to do at this point. After the Agrax earth shade, Ringo said you don't really need to do anything else. It's kind of, uh, it's pretty much fine there. I decided to just go the extra mile and do a couple of highlights. Just a couple of highlights and the highlights that I did are Mephiston Red for the shield and now Ulthuan Grey. And with Ulthuan Grey, we're just 
very simply painting the back of these tunics, the backs of these tunics here. And just dragging the color down a little bit. And we're just, just very lightly touching the tip of the paintbrush onto the backs of these tunics here. So it creates a very, very nice, sharp transitional color. We don't even have to go any, any higher than that. Cadian Flesh Tone is what we're going to use for the skin. And uh, again, we're just doing very simple, easy highlights. No real skill involved other than, again, hitting the arms and the faces. And because of the Agrax Earth Shade, you should already have some nice shading in all of the, all of the recesses and the, the shadowy areas. So really, you're just taking your Cadian Flesh Shade and you're just just very lightly touching the um, the exposed skin areas to create a little bit of a contrast. Well, thanks for watching, you guys. My question now for Ringo or anybody who's done six millimeters is, how do I base these guys? I don't know what to do with them. I don't know what to use as basing material. Should I get um, plastic card or some kind of wood or balsa wood or something? And how do I line them up? And uh, Ringo's left a comment on one of my earlier videos and said to uh, snip them in pairs and in twos and then rank them up in twos but I'm not I'm not sure how exactly to line them up or or the spacing or what what size of uh, the material for the base to use so uh, let me know if you if if you do know if you have painted six millimeter and and know or or know how to uh, where, where to direct me Okay, lead belcher, again, we're just highlighting up the front of the chainmail tunics and the helmets. And that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this little uh, short little video, and we'll see you in the next one. Laters!